Through taxes and levies, the vigil was rebuilt. Years later, Voldrick Glavinock stood on the battlements and pronounced that the defenses were acceptable. He would never speak more highly of any human engineering. Some nobles claimed the Grey Wardens were involved in Ban es Esmerel's disappearance on the eve of the final battle against the Darkspawn. Dark whispers hint that a conspiracy to oust the Wardens from Amaranthine is still afoot. The hell? She was the one that tried to kill us, wasn't she? What are they talking about? We're involved in her disappearance. We killed her. Shouldn't I freely admit that? Among the many legends that the vigil spawned was one of the great heroes of the next age, a sheep herder turned soldier by the name of Sir Alec the Valiant, who eventually founded an order of knights that lasted a thousand years. The commander's blade, Vigilant, the one that I actually crafted, crafted from the bones of an ancient dragon, was boldly stolen by Antivan crows. The blade changed hands many times thereafter, with some master swordsmen pursuing the weapon their entire lives. Some claim that this legendary blade has had a life all of its own, and that its power is steadily growing. Dworkin Glavinak further refined his lyrium sand explosives, but left the warden's employ after Kunari mercenaries tried to assassinate him. Although the dwarven bombardier took his secrets with him, he l the learned say, weird, the learned say he left for he left clues for others to follow in his footsteps. The Vigil's soldiers, wearing the distinctive silverite armor that Master Wade crafted, came to be known as the Silver Order. Under the tutelage of the Wardens, the Silver Order developed into one of Ferelden's most revered military forces, a lasting memory of the Vigil's famous commander. With Valana and the Architect gone from the region, apparently she's gone, <laughs> the Pilgrim's Pass began to see traffic again. The massacre of the militiamen and the merchants, however, led to hostilities between the neighboring human settlements and any Dalish clans that passed by. One human villager soon kidnapped and murdered a Dalish child. The clans reacted by giving the Winding Wood a wide berth. But both sides know that at some point the elves will return for revenge. A few years after Kal Haral was emptied of Darkspawn, Orzammar began sending expeditions to rediscover the knowledge of smithing that had been lost within the Tag. Is it Tag? I've already forgotten. Tag. I think it's Tag. Eventually, House Helmi decided that Kal Haral was too important to be ab abandoned. At a tremendous cost of dwarven lives, they cleared the tunnels leading to Kal Haral of all Darkspawn, making the road to Orzammar and the fortress safe again. Kalharal was reclaimed for Orzammar, Orzammar once and for all. As promised, Voldrick and Dworkin presented Orzammar's shape rate with the stone marker that told of how Kalharal's cast list had taken up arms against the Darkspawn. The commander of the Grey was invited to Orzammar as a guest of honor at a feast commemorating the defenders of Kalharal. The shaper read the names of the cast list off the markers, then presided over a ceremony to return them to the stone as befitted warriors of their stature. Sigrun, as the sole survivor of the Legion of the Dead, left Kalharal for the Deep Roads. Several years later, wardens waging, waging a battle deep underground reported encountering a perky dwarf, fighting alone and muttering odd things about her own death. In time, the Arling began to forget the tales of apparitions in the Black Marsh, and ever so slowly, settlers drifted into the region. Scholars said the veil was still thin, and thus the area still dangerous, but the people only cared that there were no longer f that there were no longer frightened whispers in the shatter shadows. The village was slowly rebuilt. Twice the Baroness's mansion was rebuilt and occupied, once by a wealthy merchant, and another time by an Orlesian mage. Both, both died mysteriously. Afterwards, the mansion was torn down completely and the site left untouched. Anders remained with the Grey Wardens a few years longer, training the Order's next generation of mages. But when the Circle Tower called on him to deliver a lecture on the nature of the architect, much to the Templar's dismay, Anders told the Commander of the Grey that his time with the Wardens was over. R what? I feel like I definitely missed a scene then. What happened with Anders and the Architect? 
And yet, not two months later, and Anders returned to the Order. Ever after, the Wardens were his home and his lasting companions. What? When the walls of the Vigil's keep were breached, the surviving defenders watched in horror as a section of stone collapsed upon Velana. When the rubble was later cleared, however, there was no body. Velana was just gone. Yeah, she teleported out. She used it as an excuse. Once the Darkspawn's threat was ended, Justice left the Grey Wardens to pursue other injustices. Years later, he appeared on the doorstep of Kristoff's widow and, smiling, simply dropped dead. Aura finally had a body to mourn. If the spirit itself remains alive, it has not shown itself. This is so weird. <laughs> Evisel's chief Ogren rallied a last-minute defense of the gate, taking on two ogres simultaneously to allow others time to regain the courtyard. He eventually passed out from blood loss, and when he awoke weeks later, nobody was more surprised than he to discover he had been credited as a hero. Ogren continued to regale young warden recruits with tales tales of his prowess in both battle and bed. His drinking games prompted at least one recruit to declare that she'd rather reattempt the joining than lift another mug. Felsi returned to Vigil's Keep several times to see Ogren, usually bringing their toddler as well. Ogren's inability to act seriously wore on her, however, and her visits dwindled, then stopped altogether. If Ogren missed her or his child, he never showed it. As for the savior of Ferelden, he did not remain as commander of the Grey for the Grey very long. The Darkspawn were no longer a real concern. The bright, the blight well and truly over. It was time for him to move on. Some claimed the commander reunited with the red-haired bard known as Leliana, and that they adventured together still. Bullshit. The pair were spotted together in Denerim a year after the blight's end. No matter the truth, the commander never did return to Vigil's Keep. And that's Dragon Age Origins Awakening. Um, are we not going to have any music for this? No, oh, though, it's, it's there. It's just real subtle. This has been one hell of a Let's Play. And I am iffy on whether or not to say that is due to the game. Once again, very strange choice here. Everything in the game is voice acted except for what I would consider the most important thing, which is the scroll of what you have done throughout the game at the end. That is so strange to me that, you know, probably what, 30, 40 just solid hours of voice acting, and they don't do that. Of all things to choose not to do, they don't do that. Uh, so, how is the premium content different from... The, the, the main story, the origin story. Well, obviously we have Talking Darkspawn and, and, and we have more to the story than just Darkspawn and the old gods, which I guess would be the archdemons, uh, based on what I can see, because they said that you always need an archdemon in order for there to be a blight, and they say whenever they find an archdemon that causes a blight, so... The archdemons are the old gods? As far as I can tell, it's always like... The, uh, I assume it's always the dragons. That'd be my guess, but... Really, the, the story just took like a left turn, and... I always find it weird when they do premium content like this, a sequel, when they, they bring in new lore, and it just... For the most part, it doesn't fit in with the regular lore, as far as I can tell, because they would imply that there are architects that are constantly in search of these dragons. But then when they find a dragon, what happens to the guys that are like the architect? And and that, I don't know, that seems like a big hole to me. He said there were a ton of them. He implied there are a lot of them. But we, we don't ever really see them, so what happens to them? Why? Whenever you add something like that, into a game, I always then look back at the original and go, is this something that you added later on, or is this something that you had in mind? And this is something that I felt was added on later, and not something that they had in mind from the beginning. In terms of the tactics, tactics works pretty damn well, uh, to a point, 
I wasn't willing to edit the, the tactics, so that is a vast improvement. However, I feel like the tactics, or at least my guess is that the tactics worked for what they came with, and then as soon as I changed it by leveling them up, they didn't have tactics for anything that I actually gave them later on. Um, there were some exceptions to that, but for the most part, that seemed to be the case. Uh, the characters, decent, not great. Why Augren's the only one that's brought forward is beyond me. Uh, then after all of that, they're kind of like, and then he w went off with Leliana. Just, what? Why did I go off with Leliana? <laughs> of course, uh, after the story you know, you ha and the gameplay, we have to talk about the glitches, including a couple game-ending glitches uh, that I encountered. <laughs> including, you know, them taking your main character's equipment and never giving it back. What the hell's up with that? Uh, quest ending glitches. Uh, I, I encountered two of those, right? Amaranthine and then the possessed ogre that I killed. For whatever reason, they didn't give me credit for killing him. Uh, then there was... Uh, the other stuff that I didn't finish, right? I didn't complete all the side quests for, for the premium content. Uh, I didn't finish everything for Awakening, but... I did a majority of the side quests. A lot of them were more or less me running around, especially in Amaranthine. Uh, I probably spent about three hours just running back and forth in Amaranthine, completing quests that ended up giving me nothing, which is always nice when it gives me nothing. The fight, like there was this line of quests for the orphans. They had a a thing in the uh, the inn. They have a little donation box. That quest line ended with a quest that seriously just gave me plus one reputation with with certain members. Uh, Justice liked it, and there were a couple other people that I heard liked it. But that was the only that was the only reward that she got was was plus one reputation for completing that quest. And it, it was just ridiculous to me, and a lot of this I feel is ridiculous, not only because it doesn't feel like they did put their full effort into the premium content but also because of how expensive it was I had mentioned it before Dragon Age Awakening is forty dollars well it was forty dollars when it first came out I assume that you can now get the ultimate edition which is what I got for l for less than forty dollars total uh, but when Dragon Age Origins Awakening first came out it was forty dollars I do not believe this is forty dollars worth of content um, really all of the premium content I really don't feel is worth it if you had po purchased it at full price if you purchase it when it first came out the base game and all of the premium content you're looking at a hundred and forty dollars and that to me is excessive and this I, I can't say that it's the most excessive game out there in terms of, of premium content or, or DLC or expansions or whatever you want to call it um, but this is the worst that I've done the worst that I've seen personally um, and I, I, I can't really step back from that because I I am blown back at, at how much this would have cost compared to a normal game where you know I, this, I played this game immediately after doing a let's play for Morrowind right now in Morrowind I would say there's more content Overall, I I did the same amount. It's it's roughly the same amount. I, I'm sure this um, this let's play went a little bit longer. Um, I think uh, Morrowind was exactly 150 videos, and this is probably going to be around you know 152 or three somewhere around there. So it's roughly the same amount. There was a lot that I missed in Morrowind. Uh, Th there were there was entire lines of quests that I completely skipped and ignored. Uh, whereas in this game, I did most of it. I did a lot of it off screen. You know, it probably would have been uh, another few hours um, on screen to do all the side quests. But at the end of it, Morrowind had more content than this. 
And this is the first premium content that I've played that actually makes me like the game less. And and I, that's not a good sign. The premium content, I, I, like I said, is, is not good. Premium content, I probably have to give a six for this game overall. And I, I would still say that the game overall is probably a, a, a seven, but really the the premium content does does very little to add to the game. It just raises more questions that I don't know if there are answers to. Um, that it, it really is a, a disappointment to me. And I hate saying that. You know, I, 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 this is not something that I want to say because I, I really did want to like this game. Um, but premium content was was bugged it uh, doesn't necessarily make sense even with the canon story i don't feel like it necessarily fits i feel like it's its own story it feels like a fan fiction you know what i mean it feels like it's a story that was written after the fact using the characters from from the original story I, it, it feels more like a fan fiction more than it feels like it's actually part of the canon itself where they go Oh, remember how you killed that Arl? Well, now you get to take over his his Arldom. Is is it an Arldom? It's probably just Arl. But you know what I mean. It doesn't necessarily feel right. How many times did they say throughout this game you can't just leave the Grey Wardens? Once you're a Grey Warden, you're in for life. And then at the end of this, they're like, everybody just kind of fucked off when we were done. You know what I mean? It's it doesn't feel like the same thing and I, I felt that a lot during this uh, I felt like it, it didn't necessarily fit in with the main with the main story uh, why the arch demon was not as powerful as the brood mother or the architect right now you could arguably say that they're roughly the same but they you're supposed to take them on at a higher level so I think the general consensus would be that if you take them on at the end of the, the the DLC that they're supposed to be tougher than the final boss of the regular game. So if you look at the Broodmother and the Architect as being more powerful than the Archdemon, that doesn't make sense to me. right? They're supposed to be subservient to the Archdemon. The Architect is supposed to be the guy that serves the Archdemon and he created the brood mother which i assume is less powerful than him although it was tougher it was designed to be less powerful than him even though that that fight was definitely hard uh yeah it, it, i don't know it just doesn't seem to fit to me and it, it had a different tone it, it just felt different it felt different and if I'm being honest, that, that line at the end was excessive, and even then, half the stuff that was written didn't make sense, which is probably why I struggled reading it from time to time, because I'm sitting here going, w that doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the characters, it doesn't fit the story, but that that is how it ends. That is Dragon Age Origins, and that is going to do it for this Let's Play. I've been Bala Scuba. I've been joined as always by the one, the only, Charles motherfucking Mahario and his supporting cast who changed so many times throughout this Let's Play that I've already forgotten some of their names. And unfortunately that is, that is my overall assessment of this game is that I will forget it. And that's sad. It, it was good, but it is not memorable. Unfortunately, that is going to do it for this Let's Play. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time for Oblivion. Thanks for watching.